Well, hello, everybody, all of you taphophiles, especially. Want to introduce you to Ron Carlson from Faces of the Forgotten. I am sure you have checked out his videos here on YouTube and on all their social media platforms. If you love going to the cemetery and love walking through the cemetery, if not, here's your introduction to him. So welcome, Ron. Hey, thanks. Yeah, I have so many questions for him. So I was like, we're not talking off camera about stuff. I really want to just dive in. Right. So give me the little bit of history of Ron. Like, what is your yeah. career path up okay. to this? And like, what is your history in, I guess? Well, a little background on me. I was born in West Germany on Air Force Base. So I'm an Air Force okay. brat, I guess. My dad married my mom, who was from Frankfurt. So German. And Swedish guy come to the states when I was three. Grew up in Niles, Illinois, and I grew up next to a cemetery, so it kind of ties in. And what always intrigued me were those oval pictures. So ever since I was like eight or nine years old, I, I'd ride my bike through there and wonder what the stories were. But going, you know, I went to uh, college. I, I went to a city school von Steuben. I went to uh, SIU University to study architecture. I've been a cartoonist and an illustrator. So I thought I'll be an architect. So I became an architect and uh, started my own company about 30, wow, 35 and 93. How many years ago? That's a long time ago. And it grew into a big downtown architectural practice, almost 100 people. And then I diversified into advertising and I'm like an entrepreneur. Not. So I started a lot of companies and now I'm kind of um, when COVID hit, I was starting to retire and sell sell my companies and parts of them. And in the and and one thing that as I was doing all this, my biggest hobby was science and history. So on the science side, I got into astrophysics and astronomy, and it gets into some other things. We'll talk about the universe and understanding quantum theory and the universe and light and time dilation. And so I got bigger and bigger telescopes until you couldn't carry them anymore. And then uh, I also got into, um, you know, really into the outdoors and adventure and uh, exploring and history. So I got, um, I became a pilot just to become a seaplane pilot. And this is going back like 25 years ago and bought my first seaplane and started venturing to Wisconsin and to Canada, going farther and farther. And then I got into a famous story of English sailors that disappeared in the Arctic. This is in the late 90s, the Franklin expedition in 18, you know, mid 1800s, 129 men disappeared up there, two famous ships. And I got in my head that I was going to go find the ships and the Admiral. And, you know, after 10 years later of learning solo, I was doing it. And I actually found in 2011, one of the ships, the famous Erebus. Of course, I was battling the government of Canada at the time. They were trying to ban me, arrest me because they wanted to find it. But so all of that, that's kind of my what makes me tick. Uh, but the cemetery thing came about because of COVID. I was into the flying and COVID hit and I was going to do this big Alaska trip. And I have a flying channel, Bush, Bush Pilot Explorer. And I totally moved away from that because when COVID hit, there was nothing to do. I, and I also love cemeteries. So I went to Bohemia National Cemetery, and I decided to bring a little Sony handy cam. Face of the Forgotten has started. The rest is history. <laughs> and that's all I practically do now. I gave up. I don't fly anymore. I'm getting too old to fly anyway. <laughs> yeah, I think your first video was July of 2020. Yeah. So it's yeah. just been two years. Just over two years. Yeah. And you just randomly did a video and posted it. Did you think there would be a response to it? Like no. there was at all or? No, I, I I just found it so interesting. I figured there might be a few people, but I didn't think they would be interested in what I had to offer. But I can tell you, I was inspired uh, by some cemetery YouTubers. Again, you go back two years, there wasn't a lot of that. Mm -mm. Uh, there was Lamont. I watched Lamont. I'd watch a guy named Reddy for History, Rhett, and Steve out in California. I keep in touch with those guys. Um, in the meantime, met a lot of other, but they, I have to say, they kind of, I said, you know, I want to try that. I, they, they, I want to see if I, I, it's my interest. And, but I, I didn't think it would be a permanent, you know, I didn't think I'd get into it so much. It just kind of evolved very quickly. Yeah. And the response was, the response at first was okay, but then I had Emma Till come out and something at Forest Home where I found some grave robbing 
and the next thing you know and the italian bride those three and it just like went like because you're based in chicago area correct? yes yes so yeah. yeah and the time emmett till story and right. everything is so big right now with the movie coming out and just a lot has surfaced yeah. with him in the last two years um yeah. which yeah. is and I, not caused by me but i just happened across his grave and i wanted to do the story also of the controversy at the cemetery yeah. where like, all of that but I also found a grave there of a woman that was famous in Chicago, a singer, and her grave was unmarked. And that's kind of what put my channel on the map, I think, to some degree in Chicago, because I, I went to my garage, I built, I made a white cross, I put her name on it, it came back. And uh, the next thing you know, there's there was a, almost some backlash on it, like the family was calling me and, but it was all good. It resulted in getting her, her final gravestone and but th that's what gave me the idea of buying gravestones for people so we do that too which is amazing amazing to do um yeah. because you going in so many cemeteries you have to see so many sad situations of right broken stones and yes. you know uncared for and unkept graves which is Correct. kind of the wave of the future unfortunately that Right. people just don't visit on like they used to yeah yeah and and the unmarked the forgotten uh, that that's why I named it faces of the forgotten I mean I, the, all, all the stories that I do not all of them are forgotten but a lot many special stories are are of people that are forgotten and it goes back to back to when I was eight years old looking at those oval pictures from the 1800s at St Adelbert Cemetery yeah I would say what are their stories what they had lives they're immigrants and all these ups and downs and tragedies and triumphs but their stories will never be told actually they'll never be known because there was no google there was no it, they're, they're lost they're lost what was the initial name of the channel was it faces of the yeah. forgotten yep day one i don't know just popped in it's a, what am i doing well i'm looking at the you know like that first cemetery was just wandering looking at the uh random pictures of people of uh, memories lost and it, it's funny when I when I talk about that like Mont Carmel Cemetery it really dawned on me I was at a newer section of the cemetery where there were recent burials and there's flowers and there's activity and you're I'm being respectful I'm waiting for the area to clear out and I turned my camera to another section right over there and most of the rest of the cemetery all the graves from the 1800s and the Spanish flu early 1900s and there's no flowers there's no people it's like frozen in time mm -hmm. and it dawned on me that wow after a couple of generations many not most but many of these families and third fourth generations they're mostly forgotten and it's just heartbreaking to think yeah. about so what is do you have a list of the graves and stories to tell like how long is your list I know I have Wow. video lists which are just yeah. I mean probably 300 things on lists that well, when I first started I would use Google and I was looking at crime stories and and there was of course so much yeah. Chicago like any big city you're going to find a bunch but as my channel grew I'm relying more and more on my viewers and I will get tons of suggestions and I will say I'll keep it in mind I'll keep it in mind but I will only take maybe one out of a hundred suggestions that it has to be a story that really really intrigues me and that's what fires me up to to drive to Dallas or go to Ohio yeah. like I've gone I, I had a nine-hour drive for just one story the boy with the train track he was buried by the train tracks I had to do this it was like but to answer your question mostly my list consists now of state by state country by country if you can okay. believe that and I really literally uh when I get a suggestion I'm really really uh loyal about sh I want to shout out the person and respect the person that suggested it in if I can and I literally I probably have about six to seven hundred stories and that's uh, stories that I want to do not the thousands that I've been given yeah. and then it's always the way it works is like I'm going on this winter trip I have 15 of my top top stories that I really want to do but I I'll get a suggestion the week before I go like I was in Rhode Island 
or uh, New England and Tommy the Cat, one of my, he, he's like, I was, le oh, it was in, um, we were in Stowe, Vermont. And the day before I left, he goes, there's a vampire story here. You know, the vampire craze of the 1800s where they thought people were vampires, yeah. you know, taking their heart. Anyway, I was like, I got to do the story. So if it's a good story, it'll, it'll just rise to the top immediately. So I'm always juggling, but I keep them on a, literally on my phone, I, on a program I have, I go state by state. And if you hit a state, I got the picture so I can immediately recognize. And then I don't do the, the deep dive research, but I have the find a grave. I have the person who referred it. I have where wow. it happened, a brief, and then I, I can like rifle through those. So nice. like six or 700. Wow. A lot in England, a lot in Scotland. I'm not going to Afghanistan, but like Australia, I'd like to, you know, so South America, there's some intriguing stories. So at some point. When it's that. hard to travel without wanting to do videos, I find that I'm like, ooh, if I'm if we're yes. gonna go there, like what's there that I can do videos? Because why travel without doing exactly it? I can't just go on vacation to vacate. I can't do it. I agree. I'm the same. So what is your dream? Like you have to have a number one that you haven't gotten to. What is your dream story if you want to oh, share it? Or not? Wow, that's a great question. Of all the stories that I have, which is the one I really want to do? I can't think of, there's so many good stories. So if I think of uh there, I pretty much hit New England. There is there is one story that's my number one, and that's in. Texas and I okay. will be doing that story and that is to oh I can't even say yeah there, I don't, there's I won't a purpose there's a purpose a personal purpose that I have on this one so okay. it's Texas Yay. so you will see it and I will say it this is you know this will be coming in January February yeah yay so of the videos you've done where's was there one you posted and the response was so huge that you never saw it coming because I know I've posted videos yeah. and I was like Totally. What? Totally. So what would uh, one of those the be? Number one, there were a couple. There was the Parsons family of a family of five, I think it was. Now, what I will do is I've done like the Keller family. I will take a, po I'm really into post-mortem mm -hmm. and the Thantos, you know, Thantos. I'm friends with, we're friends with him, the, the archive. And I will kind of reverse, you know, where where is that postmortem? What state? Research the story, find their grave, try to tell their story. So the biggest one like that was the the Keller family. It was a murder suicide, wife killed child and husband, and all three are buried in the same casket. And it's a famous picture. You may yes. recall it. Yep. So we, I researched the story. I work. I have an ancestry person who does. And wow, what a story. So I like went there, I did it and, and, but, and that took off big, but the story that really took off big that I, like I had some, I, I didn't think so on that one, but you have no idea, but the one I had no idea that caught me, and maybe this has to do with racial, is the story in Tampa, Florida. I forget the cemetery name, but there was a grave of a man that had his slave, and he was in love with her and she was in love with him. And this happened. And we don't want to get into the whole racial stuff, but yeah. they got married, not formally. They couldn't. And he wanted her buried with him, not in his casket, but or coffin. And it wouldn't be allowed. This was antebellum. Yeah. What was post antebellum? It was like right around there. And it was a controversy at the time. And the mayor stepped up anyway that is a really cool story and it went like it, it, it was a little controversial because i got backlash from a lot of people saying um oh she was a slave she was forced she was uh our word just bad stuff but 90 percent of it was 95 percent was just amazing uh, mm -hmm. but it, there was some controversy to it and i think that's why it uh and and i think youtube embraced it i think some of it the algorithms the algorithm but I think sometimes they're watching and they're like, this is a good societal, civil, maybe it was civil rights. I don't, it, it was a, it was a good story. And they, it, maybe it was YouTube that algorithm did, but that's the thing. It was like almost at a million views. I, I didn't see that going anywhere. And on the reverse, 
was there a story you were yeah. so excited yeah. and it just not yeah. flopped, but you're like, why right. is nobody watching this? Cause yeah. I was excited, but why yes. is nobody, what, what are one of those maybe that you can think oh, of? Oh gosh. Um, Bell Gunnis. I did the story on Bell Gunnis. I thought it was going to be like huge. And, but I think that has to do with if it's been done on YouTube, a very, I, I am, and from the beginning, if it's been done on YouTube, it kind of ruins it for me. I'm, I'm not talking about crime channels, but other you, cemetery YouTube people, if they've mm -hmm. done it, I, I just am like, I don't like, like, what can I add? And it's not intriguing. So Bell Gunnis was told a lot, and I, maybe I didn't see that. And maybe that's why, but yeah, I got views. And also YouTube slapped it down with, uh, you know, I, sh I showed a picture in there, a death picture. So I think they, but who knows? They frown upon those things, don't they? Hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Another subject. <laughs> so when you're going to the cemetery, are you bringing a full script with you or how do you, how do you do your videos? Like what's your method to your? Well, I do a lot of research. I do, I don't script it, but I make like bullets of dates and important things. But when I go, I tell the story. I gotta like I gotta live the story. I gotta think it in my mind. I try to remember key dates and key things, which I don't always I'm not I, I don't have a photographic memory, but I do have a photographic memory of living the story. So what my style is to not narrate. I do narrate when it's high winds and I can't I just can't produce it. Uh, it would irritate the viewers, so I'll come back and narrate it. But 95% of the time I I, I live the story and people like my style. Well, they some people like my style. Those that comment have told me that it's like they're walking with me. And that's yeah. how I want it to be. It's not perfect. It's not staged. It's like we're walking together and mm -hmm. talking as friends. Yeah. So and it's, uh, it's usually one long stream. I mean, there's not much to I, add. It's in. very important to me that it's like the I look at them also some of them as adventures like we're going together like I haven't seen this place yet and I want to see it together and you'll hear it in my voice like I did one with I collabed with someone and we went in the woods and we're looking for this thing and we saw this blue barrel and it's like and it's all like I don't like clip very not very often unless um there was something that you know, did something to the camera, I I keep it going. And it's all like real. Uh, whatever we're doing, like when I went to Arcacia Mausoleum, the Shriners and the light, I could the lights were off and I had a flashlight. And I had no idea that would be as spooky as it is. But yeah. we're going together. And we like it's an adventure. It's yeah. like a live stream. And it was, man, people love that's another one. I thought, oh, nobody will like this. And that went crazy. Because it was it was like they were you were with me and it's like, and are, real. You, are you usually there alone? I mean, always, do you go and do this alone? Always, always solo. I don't call people say uh, you should talk to detectives. You should talk to the family. I purposely do not do that. I do my research. I don't like to be steered. I'd like to be object, objective and I always go alone. Now, I people worry about me sometimes, but I take precautions. I've spent 30 years in the wilderness, solo Arctic expeditions. I mean, I'm in the woods by myself my whole life. I'm not afraid, you know, at night. So I, and I always try to come in a good way, respectful. People say the paranormal and the spirits have you, and, and I worked a lot with the Native Americans, the Lakota, the Cree of Manitoba, and the Lakota taught me, uh, that's a whole nother. <laughs> <laughs> but they said if you you come in a good way it's always important to come in a good way and that's your intentions and your respect so i always try to be very respectful but uh yeah that's i'm solo and it's not scripted no <laughs> i don't think i ever would have guessed the history leading up to what brought you to doing these but it's all like, all kind of lined up for this specific yeah. journey for you which is pretty yeah, i think amazing. you're right but you lived quite a heck of a journey up till finding it. Yeah, it was and, my life. And, and like, I get bored really fast. It's I'm not, like everything I do. I'm like a dog with a bone. I go all the way, the astronomy, the flying, the pilot. I bought a World War II plane and then went down into the mountains and had to bail out. That's that was on the news. Just 
live it to the fullest, right? And face of the forgotten, that's where I'm at right now. And but I am, uh, I'm slowing down a little on faces, and I am diversifying into the energies and the interest. You know, working. We just did a, an episode with the medium that was holy cow. So it's not a ghost hunting channel. It's but I'm the point is I'm. I keep I got to keep learning. I got to keep growing as a person, even with Face of the Forgotten, it's going to evolve. But I'm always going to do these like yesterday. I did a little family story. I'm always going to do that. So tell me about your new channel, because you do have a new channel coming. And yes. I, when I reached out to you, I didn't even know about the new channel. So this is kind of yeah. fun. You get to tell well, us it's about that. months ago, I'm working with a guy. Uh, Britain is his name is German guy. He's from the city. He was a viewer that we just hit it off and had a friendship and I started bringing he appears on faces of the forgotten sometimes and he's really into he's more of a filmmaker horror filmmaker but he had he's obsessed with cemeteries and not from the horror end and we decided we've been talking and I've always been interested in the energies from my science background and all the unknowns so I wanted to go out and take people along and learn about it from my scientific background and then investigate and grow and uncover and not sensationalize like ghost hunting channels so it's called intangible quests we call it iq for short and it was kind of funny iq i kind of like that i do we got a high iq maybe or a low iq but it's iq and we go out and we do full gambit from the the, the spirit hunting but not using the stupid devices we're trying to create our own stuff to mediums to telling stories to investigating places adventures and it, it's a wide array and it's it's going pretty good so far uh That's it's awesome. it's fun and it's it's kind of an outlet for me you yeah. know and it might be a, a, another growth step well that's when i kind of introduced my boyfriend and my channel josh and then we just wanted to do videos together but like you when your viewership is so kind of one way, they don't want you to skew off into things. And so right. him and I were like, okay, we'll go do these random, whether anybody watches or not, it gave us something and he understands then Perfect. the YouTube process. But it was, I found that same thing that people didn't want me to deviate into these other avenues of thinking about ghosts even or mediums or anything that was not just my black suit funeral director mode yeah they want to see what they want to what they're watching and that's why I did it as a separate channel because I think I can look back it's about 50 percent of my uh, my community does not want to go there yep. and I don't want to make it a paranormal and, and I can see by the numbers for the people who have come over and the views and who they are because I'm very into the comments I don't just hit hearts I like read them all and yeah. it's about 50 percent so I think it's good that I kept it separate no I think it's I I can feel you completely on that because it was the same thing and people wanted to see too my relationship they knew I had gone through a divorce and I was now dating somebody within the industry and there was people who wanted to follow that but there was a lot who were like why are you talking about this talk about funeral stuff and I'm like okay I guess okay. we'll we'll have this other space to right. answer a need or a question that people are putting out without deviating from the other and just separate and people can go there if they want to you know and perfect and that, that I think is the way to go that's what I did I agree what is kind of a dream thing for on that side of it for you like where would you like to investigate and check out like is there fun stories on your list that you're oh, yeah. well there's a story, a certain story you want to investigate in Romania, which you could probably predict. Yeah. All that. Uh, there's a story in South America. I don't want to say what country that's equally big, but not known. Uh, there are England and Scotland, you know, UK. There's some stuff. And there is, we're doing a road trip to back to not quite New England, but like, Britain and I are doing a two-day trip so that's my I love to travel these are like adventures for me yeah like my seaplane going to the Arctic and going to different places they're adventures so that's that's how we're going to do this and my dream is to uh, travel a lot 
uh, grow the paranormal channel. Faces of Forgotten growth is going okay. It's kind of slowed down a little bit just because my content has slowed down and that's fine. That will just kind of continue to go. And I'm going to put equal, you know, I try to divide my time about equally now and really uh, maybe a little 60% for now on this, this new venture and, and see where it goes. And you know what? I'm going to tell you something. Two years from now, it's going to be something else. I don't know what it's going to be. I could never have predicted I would be doing this five years ago. And it's that's how life is, right? Yep. We don't know. And you got to follow follow the path that's pick pick the whys in the road and and not just sit on the couch. Take some risks. Well, and I think it's fun for travel. Like there's places I want to go just for travel, but having a reason to pick somewhere to kind of hone in where I want to go that maybe I would never have picked before for a video or for, you know, for content, that's kind of fun. Like, exactly. It gives you a purpose of traveling to there and experiencing something maybe you never would have had on your radar. Yeah. My son is going and trips you have to go on anyway. My son is, and you don't want it. Like he went on, we went on the college tour and it's like dad don't be doing videos the whole time but he was pretty cool he's like do a couple and like he's a senior in spring break next you know the final year uh it's going to be well wait next spring yeah spring break we're going to be going i think to cancun it's like okay but i'll find something cool there yep i'll, I'll sneak away for a couple that's so, we were talking about going to austin texas for a trip and I was like, man, I got to find something. And Ooh. honest to goodness, two days later, somebody popped up on Instagram that does something in Austin related to the bit. And I was like, there you go. Perfect. There's there's my video. And I reached out to him. And I, yeah, it comes together, doesn't it? Like the stories it almost find you sometimes. Right. Or the content at the right time and at the right place to share it. And I don't know. There's reason. I think there's yeah. something lines up there for you definitely. to find the right thing definitely and the travel like you said that's a big part of it that's what makes it exciting i think because it's yeah. seeing new places that's what it's all about i agree so what would you like are is there a third channel maybe on the horizon something totally different well you have three channels four channels right. or... fourth channel no i have the paranormal uh quests right now is kind of the focus and we'll see where that goes but i'm sure in a year or two there will be a fourth channel i cannot predict i honestly couldn't predict so let's say nat geo called you today and sure. says hey ron we're gonna we want to do a show with you what is that show going to be geared towards with all of these interests and all of what you do hmm that's a good question i don't know that they would be interested in going to cemeteries but I think it would be probably more on the a tangible quest. And I think the differentiator that we have there, I know the differentiator because I scouted, you know, you do your homework and you scout what's going on. And all I see out there are people um, screaming, running around on infrared cameras with their infrared lights on themselves yes. and making stuff up. Quite frankly, they're making stuff up. And so I'm going to be the antithesis of that. And yeah, it's, it's going to be more boring because we're not going to just see ghosts all the time but guess what we are finding some cool stuff if anything we're checking a box and showing what it's like to be there like we did Marion Lambert she walks Sheridan Drive like Resurrection Mary and we did that night drive we didn't expect to see her but it was exciting or the Beast of Bray Road we went down that road with infrared I'm I'm an expert with what well, I don't want to say expert but in my Arctic expeditions, for other reasons, I used thermal cameras, big expensive ones back then. <laughs> we went down the road and we found anomalies. So you just never know what you're gonna find, but it's all in the adventure. So if they called me, it would probably be more something like that. Hey, Ron, give us the true take. Let's go on an adventure and let's let's get the true take and let's uncover the facts of first go the the house in um that's one the house in scotland that alistair crowley did all his magic spells in off the lake uh, what's it called berkshire house i know i'm getting the name wrong but anyway it's ruins now and go there and let's explore that let's tell the story but let's get some scientific equipment i actually am onto something right now 
in the infrared world. Infrared is a powerful medium to see things that we can't see. But the way people use it on the ghost channels, if you will, is they're they're taking infrared. Infrared you can't see, but it's there. Mm -hmm. And there are cameras infrared. And, and the only way you can see through the camera is if you take an infrared flashlight that your eye can't see and you can light yourself up. And that's what they all do. But what I'm doing is getting sensitivity in the dark of the camera to see infrared anomalies with no flashlights on and that's what nobody's doing so i i'm, I'm an inventor by the way i have patents mm -hmm. um us patent so i'm i'm i i like to do things i'd like to invent and do it real so if you know nat geo or discovery channel what i wouldn't i don't I never say never but um i have been called actually not by nat geo but by some people and i just don't want to get into a situation where i'm handcuffed and i can't do things the way i want to do it so it would be like yeah let's do an episode but i don't think i'd want to get involved in and then they, they make you they probably all the horror stories they would make you do stuff fake and tell you how to do it and that's i don't i don't need it you know I'm reality doing this is never real yeah, yeah i'm doing all this because i'm having fun and i'm intrigued and I don't need to be famous. Like I, that's like I don't need to be famous. I don't really care. I'm, I'm having fun. Yeah. I'm like a kid, man. You watch me in Britain. I have to say, I was watching one, the one I just edited. Now we went to Lawrence, Kansas, and we did the history for Faces of the Forgotten at the Cemetery. Real, really cool story of the Civil War family and the Quantrill raid. And then we say, okay, anybody wants to come along? I think I'm the first person on YouTube to do this double premiere, double feature. And like, see you in 15 minutes. Let's, well, those of you want to keep coming and see the haunted hotel, we're staying overnight. Come on over. And that's this weekend. And then like half the people will come over there. And then we run that premiere. But I, I was editing the video and me and Britain, I haven't told Britain this yet, but I'm like, I looked over, my son was sitting there. Like, Look at this. This is like two little kids. They're like two little grown up kids. It's fun. Look at yeah. those two. <laughs> But we're having a blast. <laughs> yeah. Do you do like meet and greets at all, or do you try to meet with fans? Have you done that at all? What I do, I uh, haven't done that yet, but I'm more open to it. At the beginning, I was kind of worried, like, is some stalker going to come and hit me over the head? <laughs> but or worse, but because we all have our haters, which is a whole nother subject. But. Yes. We, we kind of flop, slap them away like mosquitoes. And that's the nice thing about YouTube. Block and, you know, they can make about another channel, block them. But I am going, I do a lot of live streaming, um, Sundays, walks. And that's how I stay connected to my core viewers because they're very interactive, very loyal. Gotten to know a lot of them. And but this next week, it's next weekend there's a and i'm not promoting but there just happens to be a it's called days of the dead in rosemont right by o'hare airport airport mm -hmm. and there are other youtubers that are going to be there not cemetery youtubers but like grim life adventure grim 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 uh, anyway the point of it is i put that word out that if any of you guys want to meet up come there saturday afternoon i'm gonna be there blah 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 so we'll see probably two people will show up maybe nobody <laughs> i think you'll be surprised I yeah i don't expect anybody to come but we'll see but as far as just a meetup um it's it's food for thought you know i thought about you know hey i'm gonna be in dallas but i don't know i'm when i'm on the road or doing stories it's it's crazy like i'm working i'm going i don't know where i'm gonna be because i'm like I'm mobile and going. I don't even know what hotel I'm going to stay at the next night. You know, I said, you know, what's going to be, and I'm just booking as I'm going. Well, and it is hard. That's I always, if I say I'm going somewhere, people are like, "Well, can we do a meet and greet? Can we do a meet?" But I'm like, "Gosh, I don't even know what there is there for me to even right. try." So if somebody says, "Hey, I'll schedule it," or what I found has been nice is, "Hey, I'm going to go. I'll be at this crematory, and they can do a tour. I'll just be there." You know, you come up with something or even have you, like so have you done that? Have people met, met you? Was I it have good? a couple times and it's been only wonderful the couple times I've done it. And good. it's been pretty mind blowing how far people have driven. Oh, that's neat. Like hours and hours right. and hours to come mm -hmm. just meet me. And I'm blown away 
but you do you know the reason we keep doing what we do is is the stories people share and you right. know it's it just keeps you going the amazingness it does. Um, well that's encouraging to hear yeah. i may try that then uh, well and that might be like if um any of the cemeteries do like cemetery tours around okay. you link up and say hey i'm gonna join the cemetery tour if anybody wants to join the tour there this you go at that time yeah. and that way you're kind of like part of it but it's not just all about hey yeah, that gives me a good idea oh. like rose hill cemeteries kind of and graceland are kind of epicenters and they're in the city yeah. Uh, Roseville is always an escape. I look at them like sanctuaries, these places, and maybe nice. and Britain's there and say, uh, Britain and I, yeah, I like that idea. We'll say, hey, we'll we'll just do something where, hey, let's meet at Rose Hill next week. Anybody wants to come? That's yeah, cool. We'll try it. Yeah, good idea. I like it. Yeah, it's fun. I think people would love to walk walk in person with you and learn from you. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Might okay. be a little scary, but, um, you know, I always get worried about that, too. So you never I'm know. Less, I'm less afraid of it now. Just I don't know. I'm learn. You know, you learn. You keep yeah. learning as you grow your channel, and it's it's it. And overall, this is really neat because I I think about. It. I'm living and breathing this, and it's fun. Yeah. And it's fun to. I think what drives me is the growth and the people and the notes. I'm sure I know. I see on your channel. I've read comments. The notes are just. The people are just amazing. And thoughtful people, and nice. People care and about me. It. They care about my kids right. in a very genuine way sometimes. And I'm just overwhelmed by that. That some mm -hmm. his people feel they know me from watching my videos. That says that's very humbling to me that I present in that way that they do feel they know me because I am just who right. I am all the time. And you're being um, yourself. Yeah. yeah. And kind of like your relationship with Britain. I mean, that's somebody you never would have met. Right. Never right. would have encountered without just like an hour or so ago, I had a text from a guy I met down in St. Louis when I was down there doing stuff. And him and I have become such good friends that we text all the time. And, you know, these people that have entered our lives professionally and, and friendship wise that we wouldn't have never met without never would have platforms. Met. Yeah, Britain is like a fourth son now. He's about the age to be, you know, my son's age. Yeah. And I I need I miss him. Like we did an episode oh. yesterday and right tomorrow I'm gonna be like, I need my Britain fix. <laughs> I need to see Britain because he's fun to hang out with. Yeah. And we're both here's the thing, we are both so into this. Like there's not a lot of people that are so into this. Like we're both and he's available and he can he'll come. You know, it's a priority. Yeah. And it's uh we I we love both, it. Yeah. We, Can't see what can't wait to see what else you guys what comes next from you i'm gonna watch for that video in Thanks. january february from texas oh we'll see yeah what that big story and it is um, just so um yeah i don't want to say anything i'm tempted don't, to don't tell you but it. it'll it'll blow it because it, it's going to be i'm going to say my piece too it's one of okay. those where i'm going to like say my piece and educate a lot of people okay pull, pull the wool off so it's going to be a good one that makes me that makes my mind go to one story in particular that I'm thinking. So I'll see if okay. that's uh Yeah, on the side, let me know. Yeah, but you may, you may have guessed it. <laughs> but that'll be interesting. Okay, fun. Well, yeah. cool. Well, thank you for joining for this conversation. Okay. Thanks for so having me. So good to get to meet you finally. And yeah, let's do more of this. Yes, we need to. I'll take you for dinner or something next time in, in Chicago. Oh, where are that you way. at anyway? You're out east, uh, right? Southwest Michigan. I'm two oh, and a half hours from you. No, yeah. I'm, I'm close. We we go yeah. to Chicago um, a couple times a year. So I love Chicago. Okay, let's meet up. Yeah. Me too. Love to meet yeah. you guys. Yay. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. And make sure you check out all of Ron's channels. Intangible Quest, Faces of the Forgotten. And then you have your, your pilot channel. Bush Pilot Explorer, but I'm not really doing anything no. there. It's kind of like yeah. static. Yeah. We'll check them all out, leave comments, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye.